All right, all right, welcome back. Woo! So in this lecture, we're gonna be going over what a cohort analysis is. The next lecture will be um, actually writing the query yep. and showing you how to do one, but we wanted to prep it with this lecture and kind of go over it. Before we jump into it, David's gonna take you through like a sneak peek of what a cohort analysis chart will look like. Yep, so boom, there it is. There is the chart right there. And so it might look a little overwhelming at first, but real briefly, I'm gonna break this down. We're basically doing two things here. First thing on the left hand column, we're grouping users by their signup date. So it says August 2010, that's people who joined in August 2010. And then September 2010, that's another group of people. The second thing we're doing is that for each group, that cohort, that August cohort, we're seeing their activity month to month. So we see the first column that says one up top. We're seeing there how many people came to the site in month one, how many people came back to the site month two, three, mm -hmm. four, and so on and so forth. So we're following them, following that cohort through their life. Yeah, this chart has like two really big main benefits. So one, we can compare different cohorts or groups of users at the same stage in their life cycle. So that would be looking down from top to bottom on the chart. So like we can see for all the cohorts, what percentage were coming back to the site three months after they signed up. And we can compare how we're doing with our improvement in product and user experience. So hopefully that's increasing and our products becoming better and more enjoyable. Uh, the second big benefit is we can see the long-term relationship that we have with a given user group. For each cohort, about 25% are coming back after one month, 6% is coming after two months, and we can see how long people from a given cohort are coming back to the site. We can see how strong that cohort is and how valuable they are. Yeah, so that was just like a broad overview uh, of what a cohort analysis and the benefits of it. But if that was confusing, just stick around. We're gonna go deeper right now. First of all, what is a cohort? Yeah. So for our purposes, a cohort is a group of people who have become a customer around the same time. So people, for example, if we use the example analogy of a high school, people join the high school, they become a freshman in high school in 2002, that's one cohort. The next year, another group of freshmen arrived, They're, they join in 2003, that's another cohort. So we're grouping people by their join date. So after we've grouped them, we'll follow each cohort and monitor their behavior every month or every year, so on and so forth. Yeah, and so let's go. And so like, why are we grouping these people by their join date? Or why do we want to follow them over time? So like, we're going to give a real life example. Similar to our Sequila database, we're going to be talking about, let's say we're Netflix. So Netflix. we're a subscription business where people come in and pay $15 a month to watch our videos, our, our TV shows. And we want to grow our revenue. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to, hey, we want to get as many new users as we can each month. So that's like people who have never used Netflix before, get them to sign up make an account pay us that first month's fee yeah so if you want to grow revenue that's one way to do it right you get new users and what's that called Pete that's acquisition that is acquisition <laughs> key term <laughs> But yeah, so then once we acquire all these users, and let's say we acquired 5,000 last month, we acquired another 7,000 this month, and we're like, wow, we're killing it. Killing Acquisition it. Acquisition off the chain. <laughs> but we're gonna be like missing a couple big areas uh, if we just focus on that and pat ourselves on the back. And there's two big reasons to that we're, of things that we're gonna be missing. Yeah, if we see this chart going up instead of right, new users, we're like, dude, our company is growing like crazy. But you would be misjudging your business for one reason is because what if that group that you acquired last month, that 5,000 people, they paid for a subscription for $15 for that month, but then the next month, only 1% of those people continue their subscription. That would be bad. And so that those people who come back, we call that retention. That's mm -hmm. like acquisition and retention. Those are two key parts of a business. You want to have both really good. But when we look at just the acquisition, that doesn't show us a retention. But the benefit of a cohort analysis is that we can follow that group across their lifetime. So we can see how many people are coming back each month. So cohort analysis helps us in, in, in that it lets us know how many people are coming back and what our retention rate is. Yeah. And then the second thing is, so that's like comparing one group month over month. The other one would be comparing all of our cohorts at a similar period in time. So for example, the example, if we take a look at this uh, chart again here, we see that in August, so like in month three of the August 2010 cohort, we're getting about 5% of people to come back to the site. But then if we go down to March of March 2011 cohort, 
we're getting 7.2%. And so that's like a really good sign. So it's like, we've changed our product over time so that this cohort in March, 2011 is having a better experience. They're coming back to the site more. Um, and that's 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 gonna trend really well going forward. So it's a, it's a really good thing to see improvements going from top down to the bottom in a, in a yep. given month. Yeah, basically that chart kind of, that Excel kind of spreadsheet look, looking chart can turn into this line chart that shows a, a cohort's um, kind of like retention over time. And so you see here that the lines kind of decrease and that's because we don't have the data for the newer cohorts. We only have a few months of data for the newer cohorts, but that light blue line at the way bottom, that's like our oldest cohort. They've been around for 12 months. I mean, see where they're trending, right? That's how much retention we're having. But as we see retention go higher, hopefully that slope will become less steep. And that's a good sign for us because that means the lifetime value of that cohort or that those customers are increasing. And that's huge for our yeah. business. This is like, yeah, so the, the chart showing here is like really good. So each cohort is better than the one before. Yep. The idea is, okay, here, this is where our um, latest cohort is, but on that trend, they're gonna end up something around here yeah. where we're, you know, 12 months later, we're retaining 80% of our users versus 55% um, in that older cohort. So it's showing like, hey, we're improving the product. We're getting more valuable users to join. And yeah, this is an awesome way to see the strength of the business and like how well everything's going. Yep. So that's pretty much it. Now you know how important cohort analyses are. The only thing left is to to actually make one. Create one using SQL. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be showing you that in the next lecture. So go on to the next lecture. If you wanna read some more about cohort analysis and like how you can apply after you do your cohort analysis, how, how you can apply that, we provided some links in the lecture description of this lecture. So go check that out if you're interested in that. All right, see you next time.